Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I'm showing you how to make a one pan Mexican skillet. When your food is this clean and delicious, you don't even need a plate. Now as per your request, mm. this is a low carb recipe that is keto friendly, paleo friendly, and whole 30 friendly. Plus it makes a great weeknight family meal, and it's also ideal for my meal preppers. And please note that if you are vegan or vegetarian, I plan to give you some options as well as we go through the recipe. So this recipe really can be tweaked to work for all different dietary styles. Now, if you like this type of recipe, make sure that you check out my playlist for easy weeknight dinners, because this way you can have an arsenal of recipes just like this one that will help you to keep on feeling good when life starts to get Busy. And also make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because that really helps me know what you guys are looking for as well. Now, whenever I make skillet meals like this, I like to prep all of my ingredients up front because once you get to the stove and start cooking, the whole thing goes very quickly. So the first thing that I need today is uh, half of a large red onion chopped up. If you had a small onion, you could go ahead and use the, the whole entire thing. Then I have three cloves of garlic. You just want to give them a nice fine chop as well. And two bell peppers. Now I'm using a green pepper and an orange pepper. I just like to use the variety of colors because it makes the dish more beautiful. And you have to remember that we do eat with our eyes first. So the more beautiful the dish is, the more delicious the entire eating experience will be. So my favorite way to chop a pepper is to first slice off the pepper cheeks. So you're basically taking off the four sides of the peppers and don't forget the bottom, so it's five pieces. And then just go ahead and cut them into strips, turn them horizontally and cut back the opposite way, just like a checkerboard and you'll get a nice chopped up pepper. And then the only other ingredient that I'm prepping is my corn and that's because I just happen to have some leftover corn on the cob in the refrigerator. So I'm just slicing the kernels right off the cob and using those for the recipe. Now if you didn't have leftover corn, you could certainly use some frozen corn or even some canned corn if that's what you have. All three would work perfectly fine, okay? So now let's get over to the stove and start cooking. So I've got a nice big non-stick skillet that I'm heating up over a medium heat. And to that, I'm gonna add just about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once that olive oil is heated through, you're ready to add in the onion and the garlic. Give that a pinch of salt and then give it a quick stir. And I just let this go for about four or five minutes. The salt is going to help to pull the liquid out of the onion, which is gonna help cook more efficiently. And once you start to see the onion turn to that translucent color, then you know you're ready for the next step. So I just push the veggies over to the side and in goes my meat. I have one pound of grass-fed ground beef here. So I get that into the pan, I give it a little more salt, a little more pepper, and I'm adding three heaping tablespoons of taco seasoning here. Now, I have a recipe that you can make the taco seasoning from scratch, and I will leave that down in the description box below, but you're certainly welcome to use store-bought as well. And then using a wooden spatula, I'm just gonna start to break my meat up. You just want to get it into crumbles. And this is why I like to season it now because it gets all the seasoning infused with the meat while it's cooking. And feel free to pull the veggies into the mix. Just go ahead and keep breaking this down until you have small crumbles and then we're gonna let it brown in the pan. Now, as most of you know, the majority of the meat that I'm using these days, I am getting from a company called Butcher Box. They deliver high quality meat right to your door and they offer anybody in the clean and delicious community $20 off their first box plus a package of free bacon. So I will leave that information for you down in the description box below if you wanna check it out. Now, for all of my vegans and vegetarians, you do have options here. You could sub in a couple different cans of beans here, like a can of black beans and a can of pinto beans or kidney beans, or you could buy those vegetarian crumbles that you find in the freezer department at the grocery store, and you would sub that in for the meat so that you could swap this dish to work to your dietary preferences, okay? So many options, we can make them all work. So once the meat is browned, like I have here, you can see it's all broken down into small crumbles, it's browned up, then you are ready for the next ingredient. And what I have here is four cups or 16 ounces of rice cauliflower. Now I have got to tell y'all, I suggest either buying it frozen or buying it pre-riced in the produce section because trying to rice your own cauliflower, while easy, is rather tedious and it really kind of defeats this whole easy weeknight dinner. It really will add a lot of time to the process. So get that into your pan along with those bell peppers. And then I have one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes right over the top and then a can of low sodium chicken broth. Again, vegans and vegetarians, feel free to swap in some vegetable broth here or you could even use water. 
Give one more sprinkle of salt and pepper. We wanna season all of the layers as we go. And then I'm just gonna gently stir this, bring all of those ingredients together, turn the heat up just a little bit, pop the lid on and let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Really what you're looking for is for the cauliflower to become nice and tender. I find it takes about 10 minutes. Just play with it until you have it right where you want it. But a good indicator that your cauliflower is ready is that you're gonna notice that it goes from bright white to a really soft, almost translucent color just like this. Then I'm just gonna get that corn into the pan. If it was frozen, you would wanna let it simmer in there for a minute or two just to get that um, frozen edge off of it. Mine's room temperature, so I just sprinkle it in. Um, if you are super strict keto, you can of course skip the corn and add any other non-starchy veggie that you prefer, prefer, but the corn does give it a really nice sweet flavor. And then I just top it off with the cheese. So I have some shredded Mexican cheese here. It's a combination of cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese. I do about a cup right over the top and then you're just gonna pop your lid on, shut your heat off and let that sit for about two minutes just until the cheese has melted on top of all of the goodness. Mm. Now this meal is completely satisfying mm. and it's super mm. hearty and delicious mm. just the way it is. That is so easy to be so good. So much flavor. You guys are going to love this one. Mm. A lot of times when the kids are eating, I will serve it along with some wraps so that they can make little burritos or little tacos with it if they want. Or I might put some corn chips on the table with some guacamole so they can kind of scoop and dip as they go because I do find that kids get more excited about eating when they can kind of play with their food. So there are so many options you can do with this. And like I mentioned at the beginning, if you are into meal prep, this would be a brilliant dish to make ahead of time and then store into separate containers so you could have it for easy lunches and dinners during the week. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this video with anybody else you know who wants to cook more, eat well, and feel great. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees, and I will see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers! A one pan Mexican skillet from the top. Ready? Now, as per your request, keto friendly, paleo friendly, and whole 30. So I've got a nice big non skit. One, two, three.